Thanks everyone for coming along to, uh, for a bit of a touch of politics this afternoon uh, after that wonderful lunch. Um, so my name's Alex Lum, I'm uh, here representing uh, Wikimedia Australia. Um, it's my Twitter handle and uh, my username on, 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 on the Wikimedia projects on, uh, and on OpenStreetMap if you want to see. Now there's a asterisk next to the name of Anthony Green. Anthony Green's the ABC um, election analyst. Uh, so I've rather cheekily used his name. I just want to start off with a couple of disclaimers. First of all, as you heard, I'm representing Wikimedia Australia. I submitted a proposal to do some um, workshops or presentations on Wikidata, so it's very much Wiki related. Uh, and then I kind of put this one at the last minute and this was the one that was accepted. Um, Wik Wikipedia actually has a rule against no original research and what I'm about to show you is the very definition of original research, so um, don't put it on, on Wikipedia and, on, and on either. But luckily, as I said, the uh, aforementioned Anthony Green will um, We'll do that and, and we can use his uh, calculations on Wikipedia. That being said, uh, this is not actually Secrets of Anthony Green, as I cheekily titled it, um, and it's not endorsed by him. I just cheekily used his name as, a, as, a, you know, as, you, as I'm sure you can gather a bit of a hero of mine. Um, now, the last one, and I'll, I'll come back to this at the end, there is no definitive way to do this um, because uh, we have anonymous voting, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always going to be an estimate, uh, different ways to model it, and uh, there's a, there are a lot of assumptions made, so everyone's going to, you know, the same people can use pretty much similar uh, methodologies, but come up with different uh, numbers, and I'll show you some of those differences. So there's no right or wrong way to do it, um, and all you can do is try and, uh, to model it as best you can. So what is an electoral redistribution? An electoral redistribution is when the electorates or electoral districts or electoral divisions uh, that are used for an election in a, in a country or a state. Um, uh, they have their boundaries changed around to try and make the elector population as even as possible. Um, so it's just a bit more democratic if, uh, if each one has the same, um, uh, yeah, has about the same or within a region of tolerance, the same uh, number of uh, eligible voters. So how they work it out is they take uh, the projected enrolment qu quota, so they use the ABS's projections uh, based on the census, divided by the number of seats in the parliament for which the election is being held. And the objective is, as I said, to have the projected elector population, usually before the next election, within a permissible range of that quota. There'll be some higher, some lower, and they usually use the opportunity to make a few name changes as well. So we've just had a, quite a few federal redistributions happen, and they've changed uh, the division of Batman to Cooper, and. Uh, Melbourne ports to McNamara and so on. So they're kind of the same uh, boundaries, but uh, they've changed the names. They've used that opportunity. This is a box plot of, this is the Victorian state election. So I'm gonna go, what I'm gonna cover is mostly the federal election that's, uh, that'll probably happen in um, 2019. Uh, this, is, this, this is just to show the reasons redistributions happen. So a redistribution happened just before the Victorian state election in 2014. This is the box plot which shows the, the thick line is the mean. So that, um, that's, the, that's probably what, what the quota was. And as you can see, it's very nicely evenly distributed. Um, the highest and lowest levels, it's all sort of quite even. Four years later, so the, we've got an election coming up this weekend. St another state election in Victoria. Four years later, the, the box has changed considerably. There's a big skew. Um, and you can see the population. There's even some outliers. There's about five or six outliers there where the population has risen up so much, they're mostly places in Melbourne's, the fringes of Melbourne, like Cranbourne and so on, where the population has gone up so much, it's, uh, it's an outlier in this, uh, in this plot. And uh, so the next um, redistribution for the state of Victoria will happen before the next election, the election after this one in 2022, and they'll try and get it back down to a, a nice even distribution again. There are some other reasons for redistributions. So as I mentioned, a lot of them happened uh, this year, uh, before the, the next federal election. Um, one of them is that they use, uh, the uh, Electoral Commission uses ABS data, or the whole population data, to work out representation entitlements. So that can change the number of seats. So for example, the House of Representatives will have 151. It's had 150 uh, seats and, and electorates for quite a long time, but the next election will have 151. The other things that's changed, uh, it also takes into account demographic changes, you know, population shifts in states. So the outcome of that is basically what's happened is that the uh, population of South Australia has remained quite static, uh, whereas the population in Victoria and the ACT has risen. 
So that means that Australia, oh sorry, Victoria and ACT get an extra seat, and South Australia had a seat, uh, 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 one fewer seat, one less seat, so a seat abolished. Uh, there can also be legislative changes to the number of seats in a chamber, which require all the, the um, boundaries to be re re redrawn. <coughs> so the objective of what we want to do is to model or simulate the previous election as if the new boundaries that have been um, confirmed and gazetted had been in place at the previous election. So we're talking the last election in 2006 for the federal elections. We want to identify notional changes in electoral margins. So how, who would have won that seat, how much they would have won it by um, in, this, in this situation if that last election had been held with the new, the new seats. So how likely they are to be lost and gained and you can build a Macaris pendulum which is a, a particular Australian invention by Malcolm Macaris, the cephologist who um, yeah, devised a, a pendulum where a swing, an electoral swing, a uh, uniform swing, can, you, know, you can get an idea of how many seats will be lost or won by a party um, on that swing. And that means that the next election, when the next election is held in 2019, we can model a change in electoral sentiment. So what do you need to do this? At the very least, you need geographic data of the new boundaries. So uh, most of the electoral commissions in the state or the Australian, the Federal Australian Electoral Commission will release uh, these are shape files or map info files and so on. You also need polling places or boots used at the previous election. So you can, you can download that from, from those electoral commissions as well. And you do need coordinates for those. Uh, so uh, most, of, most of those will be provided as CSV files or Excel files. You need the results of the previous election at the polling place level. So a booth, um, and yeah, you'll need the, the electoral results broken down. Um, and as I said, once again, that comes from the Electoral Commission. And you can do the analysis in terms of what software you need. You can do the analysis in what, pretty much whatever you're comfortable with. I did it in R. You can also use QGIS, Python, SQL, um, Postgres, Excel, or pen and, and a very large piece of paper. So as I said, I did it in R because it can handle uh, a, it's very good at data wrangling um, and handling large data sets and it can also do the, um, the mapping and, and GIS part of it as well. So I'm going to do, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, change in representation entitlement, uh, Victoria gained an extra seat. That seat is the division of Fraser, uh, which will be used in the next um, federal election. Uh, as I said, Victoria went from 37 to 38 seats. It's in Melbourne's northwestern suburbs and it's named after former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. So this is a map of the old divisions um, and the, the dots of the polling places or the booths that were used at the last election. So this is a map of uh, parts of Corwell, Gellibrand, Gorton and Maribyrnong. And this is where Fraser sits. So the, the dots of the polling booths are the same um, and that's where Fraser uh, now sits. And as you can see, parts of those four electoral districts or electoral divisions um, have, been, have become what is now Fraser. There are 27 polling places in Fraser <coughs> listed here. And here's the, the, how they, they um, break down in terms of which electoral districts they come from. There are more than 27 here because there's some that are, were on the border and they were used in two um, divisions. So there's, I think it's 32 listed there. So what we do is we grab all that data, put it into R. As I said, you, know, you, have, the, you have your election results by booth, um, your coordinates and your um, boundaries. Put it all together and add up the, all the booths that, were in, that are now in Fraser, add all the electoral results together and you get this. So the primary votes or first preference votes and the two party preferred um, breakdown. So there, by this um, method, we get 70.8 Labor, so that's Labor on a, the Labor Party on a 20.8% margin, which is pretty good for them, so it's looking very good for Labor. So how can we improve this estimate? So I guess the main thing we need to deal with or look at is the, the border problem. So this seat here, the, the red dot, um, it's, it's on the border of Fraser, and that means that while that was in, that uh, was previously in Corwell. I might have lived, you know, just in um, quite nearby that that seat. Um, that was that was my nearest polling place. 
but now I, I still live in Caldwell, but I can't go into Fraser or can't vote there because that's not my uh, um, local electorate where I live. So there actually ends up being a proportion or a percentage of votes um, at a polling place that will remain in their old division and not be transferred to the new one, even though the polling place is in um, the new division. So we can, we can estimate that by using SA1 data from the um, Bureau of Statistics. Um, so as, as I'm sure you'll know, SA1s are you know, geographic areas with an average population of about 400 people, designed as the smallest unit for release of census data. You can download all these from the um, AEC website. So you can download Excel files. Uh, it's great they provide this. They have the number of votes cast in each SA1 area. They use the seven digit ID um, as the identifier and also which um, areas are located in the new division of Fraser. So we can mash that together. We can use the, the previous data we calculated and work out a proportion for each um, polling place or booth or the proportion of votes or voters that will be um, now voting in Fraser. So we recalculate that using uh, proportions of the votes cast in the SA1 and we get slightly different figures. They're generally around the same. That's gone from 70.8 Labor, mar um, labor margin to 70.6. So is there anything else we can do? Um, this, is, this is based on, a, on the ideal scenario we have where the AEC provides a lot of this information. So they provide the number of votes by SA1 and so on. Um, but sometimes your, the situation you're looking at may not have all that data provided at that level. So you can look at the redistribution commission reports. They're the organisation that does all these redistributions. And they usually produce quite detailed reports, which have a lot of information about how many electors were transferred from one division to another. So you can look at that and analyse that. Um, you can use GIS tools, uh, such as QGIS or um, Postgres databases to uh, match where booths, electorates and SA1s intersect and build your own proportions. Or you can also use Voronoi polygons. So these can be done from QGIS in the geometry tools. Um, so there's an example there, it'll show you the polygon which is the nearest for, of, of everyone where that's the nearest um, polling booth for them and you can use the percentage of that polygon uh, in the new electorate to, to give you a rough estimate. But as I said, that's if you don't have the, um, all the data that the Electoral Commission provides. Now the tricky part is um, declaration votes. Declaration votes can't really be connected to a location. Uh, so these can include pre-poll votes. Pre-poll votes can usually be someone um, at work and they're, um, you know, that they're not voting near the, where, where they actually live. Uh, postal votes, um, I think they can, in some respect, uh, get some statistics on those, but uh, they're generally counted in this declaration votes. Absent votes and provisional votes where people might not be registered in that electorate, and they, but they say they are. So this is quite tricky. Um, you can already get a pretty good uh, idea from the, um, yep, um, from the uh, previous calculations we've done. But uh, we look at the, you can look at the um, Electoral Commission report and get the percentage of electors transferred into the new electorate. Um, divide that by the declaration votes. And Anthony Green also weights results by party support. The uh, Electoral Commission in South Australia doesn't do this, so he's always having an argument with them about um, what the difference is. So I've done that, That's, that was probably the trickiest part of it, but as I said, I just added that in R. Uh, and I get a fairly different figure, so it's 71, so it's gone from 70.8 or 70 points, then to 70.6, and now it's 71.1. Uh, so it's a fairly small amount in the broad scheme of things, and you still get a, a pretty good picture of um, how, the, uh, yeah, how the breakdowns were and what the margins will be. So then, just rinse and repeat, do the same for the remaining um, redistributed divisions. So not all states in Australia, uh, there was quite a lot this year, I think it was five or six, but not all of them were distributed, so like now New South Wales didn't, for example. Um, you can then use your two-party or two-candidate margins to construct an electoral pendulum. Uh, and just note that some divisions, their boundaries can change so much, the division may have the same name, but notionally it will be held by a different party. So Dunkley, one of the Victorian seats, is held by um, Chris Cruther, who's in the Liberal Party, but because of the changes of the boundaries, um, that is notionally held by the Labor Party, and, you'll, you'll, you, and these calculations will show that. 
Now, as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a pretty inexact science. There is no right answer. And uh, excluding myself, these other people are uh, quite uh, uh, renowned sophologists. Um, so they're the, they're the uh, what, I, what I've calculated. Anthony Green calculated 70.6 for Fraser. Notice that this is, uh, that was what we got in their second calculation uh, using the SA1s. Uh, ben Rowie from the tally room uh, got 69.8 and William Bow from Pole Bludger got 70.5. So they're all around the same area but you can get quite differing results depending on the methodology. Sometimes manual uh, you know, estimates can be made or assumptions are made that uh, another person might not necessarily make. And I guess the advantage of linking all, all this electoral information to, uh, to uh, SA1s is that you can derive electorate demographic data from the census. Uh, the bonus of the, uh, just to note, point out with that though, the AEC information is using um, the 2011 census SA1 areas. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, you can probably do your own analysis to, to link it to 2016 and then uh, then you can uh, link it to the 2016 census data. Thank you for attending and uh, any questions?